seeing the stream live on my end. Is it live on your end? Oh. I just want to confirm that we are live. From my hand, it says live, so hopefully everybody... I'm, I'm looking at the chat, and uh, I don't see the stream playing from, from the chat, but maybe it's just my screen. Let us know in the chat if you can see the stream, <laughs> so that'll be a good a confirmation that the stream is playing. Oh, it looks like it's working on my end now. Never mind, I think it was just me. Let us know in the chat. we just done a little bit of the intro. We haven't done uh, much more than, than that, so of course, let us know. Yeah, um, letting us know. Yeah, yeah, we're live. We're live. Awesome. It must have been just my screen. Yeah. So we just said hello to everybody. And um, of course, as I said, today and um, tomorrow is going to be the last for work at least for now with me and Asus. So make sure to submit, submit your work uh, in order to be featured tomorrow with us. And if you have anything like that you are ready to submit right now, I might be checking my evil even during the stream. So make sure to submit and let me show you how you can submit here to rework it. So in order to submit your work, let me jump real quick into my screen. Uh, all you have to do is add to imcloudy.com slash rework it. And from here, you can click on the submit your design button and then fill in the form. Uh, make sure to set your email, your name. You can add your files, either JPEG and your Behance profile. Very important for us to give you a shout out. Of course, the data consent. And you have a box here in which you can place every information that you want. And just real quick in case, you know, we're not sure if we were live or not, but of course, I, Biola, Frank, Sean, Mercuria, Christina, Wade, everybody, thank you so much for joining us here for Rework It. And uh, fantastic. So, Jesus, what about, what about starting with Photoshop? I'm going to jump in your computer real quick. Yeah, let's do it. Also, shout out to Gus Martin in the chat. Hey, Gus, how's it going? Good to see you in the chat. Fantastic. And, and yeah, let me know if you're are. on my screen. Yes, we are. All right, awesome. So you should be able to see the Behance profile for today's artist. Um, his name is, and I'm sorry if I mispronounced it, Achilles Argiruv from uh, Nocasia Cyprus. And he is a student and you can see his work here. Make sure that you give him a follow. What I'll do is I'll paste the link in the chat. Um, and then I'm sure uh, Wade will make it clickable under. Thank you so much for helping out, Wade. And yeah, this is his work. As you can see, he does a lot of fantastic work. And actually this reminds me a little bit of um, um, one of the, I think my, maybe Paul Trani did one of those creative challenges. I'm not really sure, but very familiar. But anyway, the point is that he's got a lot of fantastic work. So make sure that you follow him and thank you so much for submitting today's design. And this is the composite here. And before we, we get into it, I just want to say that he created this little title card saying, hey there, Jesus and Claudia, welcome to my PSD. Let's have fun learning. So thank you so much for creating that Tyler card, uh, a title card. And as you can see, he's got a whole bunch of layers and it's fantastic. And what I'll do is I'll just disable all these groups one at a time so that you can see how this composite was created. And it's wonderful. Also, he, um, Achilles actually did something that I talk about a lot in the stream, which is naming your layers. He actually named all his layers, at least, at least most of them. As you can see, every group and every layer is named, which is fantastic. I just wanted to point that out. It makes me so happy to see. So again, I've mentioned in previous streams that one of the reasons that you want to name your layers, specifically when working on composites like this one, is that you can right click over a layer and you can actually see a drop down. And, and let me rephrase that. When you select the move tool, you can right click on a layer and you can see a drop down of all the layers underneath that pixel you clicked on. And then you can just select that corresponding layer and Photoshop selects it in the layers panel. So that's a very useful way of um, selecting layers if you don't want to just you know, scroll through all these la uh, adjustment layers that you may have. In this case, he's got at least you know, a few dozen, maybe even 100. But it's a lot easier to select the layer just by right clicking over the image and selecting the layer that you want. And if you have the layer name, then it's a lot easier to find instead of layer 1, layer 10, layer 20, whatever it may be. So again, I'm going to disable all the layers just to see what we have here. And we're going to start with the background. Now, the background has a lot of effects applied to it, and it's it's great. I think that you did a good job applying the 
effects to the background. But the one thing that I, I will mention is that it might be a good idea to make the background darker. The one thing I'm not liking about the composite, I think it's fantastic. But the one thing that I think it's a little lost here is that everything is so bright. The background is bright. The astronauts are bright. You know, the clock here is, is or the watch is bright. The satellite here is bright. So there's a lot of bright areas on, on the image. And I feel that there's not enough contrast and everything just gets so lost and confusing because there's no contrast between the background and foreground. So I think that one of the things that will really help this composite is by simply creating a curves adjustment layer above the background and just making it darker. Just click and drag down on the curves adjustment layer. And I think that by making it darker, you separate the background from the foreground and it just helps the image look a bit better. And I think that now that the background is darker, we could also play by adding some uh, glowing effects to the different elements in the scene and it might stand out and even look better. But that's just, um, you know, what looks better to my eye. If you like, if you want it flat, then by all means leave it flat. But I think that by adding contrast and separating the foreground from the background, you get much better results. Um, Carol said, uh, what cool sci-fi do we have here? Yeah, it's a super cool sci-fi effect. I definitely, definitely agree. And I want to say, I wanted to ask as well, everybody in the chat. So does anyone, is anyone fan of sci-fi um, movies? Because that's one of my favorite. And in particular, since we're talking about movies, and I, that's what I was thinking of. And that's what these uh, multiverse sort of compositing make me think of is one of my favorite sci-fi movie, perhaps... It's actually one of my favorite movie in like in general is called Interstellar. Jesus, have you watched mm. that movie? Yeah, I do. I, I like Interstellar, Interstellar a lot. So let us know in the chat if you have any sci-fi movie, if you like them, if you don't like it, and if you do, which is your favorite. Let me know if you how many people will vote for Interstellar as well, because to me it's the movie. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think a lot of people in the chat, especially the, the people that listen to the stream often know that I'm a big fan of the Marvel movie. So this kind of reminded me of Marvel um, Endgame, the Avengers Endgame movie, I should say. Oh, because they did travel back in time. Yeah, exactly. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Um, no spoilers. But yeah, <laughs> so I'm just going to keep going through the different layers. And, and one thing I did want to mention is there is, yeah, the arrow, this arrow here. So now working non-destructively is great. And I think that you should do that as much as you can. We have these arrows here coming out of that, that you know, wormhole. But if, if I double click on this smart object, notice that, oh, the layer is locked. Is that the, or the group is locked? Yeah, the group is locked. So that's why I couldn't open it. Let me try again. I'll double click on it and there we go. So we have the arrows in this group and you can see how they were made by stacking all these different layers together, which, you know, it, it's fine, but I think that you can get a, a similar result by not doing so much work. Like for example, let me show you. Um, first of all, what I would have done is I would have done it I would have done this with um, vectors. So for example, here you have another smart object, so I can double click on it and there it is. That's, that's what it looks like. But you know, you could have done all this with a vector and I think you would have need to do all these layers. It's just super, in my opinion, um, too complicated for an effect that doesn't require all that work, for example. Um, I mean, I'm just going to quickly replicate it and it's not going to be, you know, perfect, but I think you'll get the idea. So I'm just going to rotate this like so. And I'm just going to add a couple circles. Um, and what I'll do is I'll just fill it with, I mean, the color really doesn't matter at this point. So, um, whoops. Actually, what I'll do is I'll do it on on top of everything. And by the way, here. Jesus, we have a lot of sci-fi fans. Oops, um, that's my audio going on. But we no have worries. a lot of a lot of um, Star Trek and um, let's see. Oh, my mom is in the chat. Ciao, Julie. <laughs> Ciao, Julie. Uh, and Caroline says, where is Voodoo Val? Because of course we know <laughs> that our beloved Voodoo Val uh, is a super mega fan of sci-fi and she comes here dressed up in all sort of movie characters and we absolutely love her and Mr. 
when she's not streaming. So Dorina is saying Star Wars and Interstellar. Yeah, so we got another Interstellar. Spaceballs. Mm -hmm. Is that a cartoon? Oh, Spaceballs. No, it's a. Uh, is that the is that the spoof of Star Wars? If I'm remembering correctly. And by the way, right now I'm holding Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac, and when you do that, you duplicate the layer that you have selected. And I'm I'm using the Move tool. But anyway, I'm just gonna resize some of these, and you know, like I said, I'm not gonna make it perfect, but I think that you'll get the you'll, you'll get the idea, because I'm gonna put these all in. Um, You'll see what I'm about to do. So and I have. Well, all... you... Oh, sorry. I thought you were gonna take no, a go second. Ahead, go ahead. In the meantime, I just wanted to say hello to our friend Dave Clayton in the chat. Dave, nice to see you. That you joined us here on Rework It. Nice to have you here. Yeah, good to see you, Dave. How's it going? Um, Dave and I have a an ongoing joke. I mean, it's very difficult for me to understand how British people um, say the time. <laughs> so. We always mess around with that. Like when you guys will say things like, "Is half past four? And I'm like, "What does that mean?" <laughs> Quarter to two. <laughs> but any, yeah. So I'm like, wait, what? Um, I feel like I have to do a lot of math um, instead of just saying like four fifteen or whatever. Um, but anyway, so when I have all these vectors selected, what I can do is press Control E on Windows, Command E on the Mac, and that will just put them on one single layer. See that? And then. What I can do is add a, a gradient layer style. So I can add a gradient la layer style. And it, I'm going to use the same colors that Achilles used. So you know, I'm just going to click on this color here and click on that one there. And you know, it's more or less the same. I know it's not 100% the same, but you know, I think I think you get the idea. So now you're wondering, OK, well, that's cool. But you know, what about the, the, the shadow, the shadow effect that, that he has there? Well, you can just, um, let me just reset um, this to default. Oops, I lost my grid over overlay, but I'll bring it back. I can just add a drop shadow. And I'll reset it to default again. And what I can do is just increase the opacity, bring it down a little bit, also increase the um, reduce the size like so and i'm just trying to get it to look more or less like how he had it you know something like this it's not you know not not perfect but you know something like that and i can adjust it so that it you know kind of looks like that and i can just select you know this color here and you know maybe reduce the opacity to to whatever color you know i want and i can keep uh, pressing on the plus button and then you know do another one and then i can press the plus button again and do one more if need be. And this one, I'll reduce the opacity to like, I don't know, maybe like 20%. The point is, is that now I have something that looks a lot like what he had there. And it's just one single layer. See that? Just one layer, basically the same effect. And, you know, like I can obviously distort it to try to um, make it match the, the effect that he had, you know, something like that. Um, but the point is, is that you're able to create all of that just in one layer using layer styles. It's non-destructive and you can scale a vector up or down and you won't lose any quality. And the way that he did it here is he created this effect with how many groups? Let's count one, two, three, four, four groups, four groups. And each group has one, two, two layers. So we're talking about eight layers and some of these layers are, two of these layers are smart objects. I'm not really sure what he would make the gradient field of smart objects. So it's good to make layer smart objects when, when it makes sense. In this case, I think we're just bloating the file. And he sent me a PSV. If you notice the file that he sent, it's a PSV, a Photoshop big file. So I'm wondering if this file is, you know, over two gigabytes. And it probably is because he's got so many nested smart objects instead of smart objects. And, and again, it, it doesn't make sense as to why. So I would uh, consider creating um, some of these effects in just a single layer, just using a vector like I did here, a layer style, and you save yourself all these groups and all that layer. So in reality, all you need is that. And and you don't even need a smart object for this. You can just bring it into the actual composite, you know, drop it in here, and then just work with that. So I I really think that um, he, he went a little overboard there with the, um, with the smart objects. So I would reconsider doing that with a vector. But you know, 
is what he has here now. So that's that's what we'll uh, use. Also, um, you said he's again another reason this file is so big is because um, he keeps using the smart object, which is a copy of the background, just to apply the the color. I don't think it's necessary in this case to apply that color because you could have done it all. You know, again with a gradient, you don't need to just bring in the color from from the foreground um, like so. So then I, I just would have, uh, it would have been much, much more efficient if you just would have used the gradient style or maybe just paint over it with the layer instead of using a smart object of the background just because that will bloat the file even further. So I would just be careful with that. Um, and so another sorry. thing. Oh, yeah. Sorry to yeah. interrupt you. There were just a couple of things piling up here in the chat. So we have, first yes. of all, Sean saying regarding your jokes about the time that if you say 1130 um, in German, it means 1030. So it's very tough <laughs> actually in German to, to say the time because half 11 means 1030. <laughs> apparently and then we had a question regarding um your previous step from carol asking wondering if motion blur would have worked um yeah motion blur could have worked um so i mean j just to show you uh, motion blur could have worked um i'm not exactly sure which specific part of motion blur but you know i'm just gonna convert this to a smart object so i can apply the motion blur effect so filter um, blur motion blur is right here and I can just set the the angle where the so that it matches the arrows you know maybe something like that and then that becomes a smart filter and I have a mask this is a mask so I can just paint with black on areas where I want to hide the effect so you know maybe something like this you know and then I could also click on this little icon right here, this one here in the layers panel, and it brings up the blending options in the blending mode. So I could also reduce the op opacity of the blur and then do something like that. And you know that also could have worked, yes. Fantastic. Cool. And let me delete this layer. Now let's look at the um, astronauts. So again, the, the same comment that I had for the um, for these arrows I have with the pixel stretch. I know that oops, uh, the group is locked again. I know that. Um, let me see which group right here. That one's locked. So in this case, I'm I'm not opposed as having uh, to having this be a smart object, but I don't think this this particular layer here needs to be a smart object. If I double click on it and open it, I can see that you have um, just this little one sliver of pixels and then you stretch them out and then convert that to a smart object. I don't really think you need it. So again, you're bloating the file, making it bigger, which is why I assume that you use the PSB because the file was probably over two gigabytes and that's why. Um, just a lot of smart objects that you don't really need. But um, having said that, in this case here, having the smart object does work because I can tell you did some distortions and all that. So if you wanted to, you know, come back and adjust them, then you definitely can do that. I can see that you warped it here. So in that case, it does make sense to make a smart object here. So that one's fine. But the one in there, I probably would have not added. Um, let me just take a look at this astronaut folder and see what you have here. So we have this astronaut. And there he is. And of course, he is a smart object in here as well. So I don't think so. So this is this is the point that I find interesting. You have a smart object within a smart object, and there's yet another smart object in here. So that's three smart objects inside one another. I don't think that you need this many. You only need one. In reality, you could have taken this photo here. Um, cropped it non-destructively, so make sure that delete crop pixels is unchecked. You know, bring that in really, really close, like so, and then do your masking here, and then convert this to your smart object, and that's all you need. Instead of having this smart object, let me let me close this. And by the way, so while you close this and finish it, uh, Michelle is actually saying like, what you what, what you're talking about right now, that um, she started to have in less layer and less marked objects. And uh, in a photo composition in a PSB format are much heavy and slow down the process. So she said, thank you so much, Jesus Ramirez, because she's exa exactly doing what you are, what you're showing. 
Yeah, yeah, it definitely slows down the process having so many smart objects and so many, you know, nested smart objects. And there's just no need to have that many. Like in this case, you only needed one again of the astronaut. You didn't need to have the, the following smart object <coughs> with the two layers in the layer mask and then the other smart object, this one here, that shows, you know, what the original background has. That, that's just unnecessary. You could have been fine with just one and it would have kept the file size much lower and it, everything would have worked fine. So also, I mean, I guess in this case, it doesn't matter having the, let me, let me just see something. Um, yeah, it's fine. So, so you could have just had all, all uh, everything in, in just one smart object, not two or three. So, so that would be the other thing that I would change. Obviously I'm not going to take the time to do so because we're running out of time, my, my time. And then Claudie's going to be up next in just a moment. And the same thing is probably going to be true for this astronaut. Let me take a look at it. Let me see what's in here. So Antonietta has a question in the meantime as well. Yeah. She said, could you use the mixer brush for that design? I mean, I don't know in what context you um, mean mean it there. And, and I'm sorry, who was the person asking that question? Antonietta. Ant Anto Antonietta. Antonietta, yeah. Yeah, um, I'm not sure in what context you, you mean um, to use the mixer brush, but yeah, you can definitely use a mixer brush for several things. I'm guessing you mean by these, these um, what do you call them? Like these pixel stretches. I mean, I, you could you could have probably done it um, with the mixer brush if 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 you wanted to. I've actually done a tutorial on my YouTube channel on how to use the mixer brush to um, extend a building. Actually, so let me let me quickly sh show you. I'm I'm gonna put this tab here and if you go to my youtube channel photoshop training channel and scroll down you will see a tutorial did i pass it already um on stretch oh here we go expand and bend buildings in photoshop so um using i use the mixer brush so if you want to learn more about how the mixer brush works you can come in here and and check this tutorial out but it's basically, um, I'm mean, basically using that same quote unquote pixel stretch effect, but I use that pixel stretch effect to create um, a building, uh, extend a building and then bend it. So that, that's more or less what it looks like when, you know, the um, process is completed with the mixer brush. And now I'm using the puppet warp to, to do something else, but you can check that out if you want. And I go into much more detail as to how the mixer brush works if you're interested in that Let's photoshop training channel says. is the youtube channel i'm sorry so antoniette saying that she referred in particular to the streaks yeah yeah so these yeah so so the answer to that specific question is yes um you could have done it that way and that's exactly the same technique that i used in that video i was referencing to extend the building it, it'll be basically the same technique fantastic Cool. And we have Ferry um, that has joined us as well. Ferry, nice to have you here. We're, we're missing you. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Hey, Ferry, how's it going? Also, I noticed that um, there's some stars going over the astronauts here. So I'm not sure what the intention behind that was. Um, I personally think that the stars should be behind the astronauts, but maybe there's a reason why they consider that. Also, um, everything in this composite earlier was completely bright and had a blue tint to it. So I, I would have just maybe changed the light ray color here to instead of blue, you know, make, maybe a different color just, just to get some some maybe red or something in here, just Ooh. because everything just felt like it's the same color is the same. It feels very monochromatic. That's not necessarily a bad thing. But I think that in this case, it will benefit from having a different color rather than, than blue. Or maybe even go for like, if you're going to go for blue, I would probably go for like a stronger blue so that it really stands out, not so that everything is more or less the same color. So that's a, just another, Totally. You know, when, when you change it to red, it just gives you a dimension to it that it wasn't definitely less mm -hmm. flat. And we have a question for you, which I think is very useful. Michelle is asking, do you have a tutorial about when to put layers into smart objects and when not, Jesus? Um, yeah, Michelle, unfortunately, I don't have a tutorial on that, but I can answer that question. Um, I would put things into a smart object if you're planning to make non if you want to make non-destructive adjustments to something, but only if that's the 
option that you have. In some cases, like in today's example, there was another option. The option was to use vectors and to use layer styles. So you kind of have to think about, about it. Like, is there another solution to using a smart object? And sometimes a smart object is the only solution and it is what it is and that's fine. But other times, you know, you can do a little thinking and maybe get away without using one. And now we're going to have a tutorial on your channel on it? Um, yeah, maybe I, could, I can probably consider doing something like that. That's a good idea. Um, because other people were liking the idea and think that that was a very good question. So uh, Michelle is also saying I have too many layers in smart object in case I want to change the size later and not, in order not to lose quality. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and like I said, sometimes it is what it is and, and you have to you're stuck with what you have. But other times, like in this case, I at least in my opinion, I think it was unnecessary to have so many. But, you know, sometimes you, you have to have that many. Fantastic. And we got RB right. giving out some tips as well. RB, what's up? Nice to see you. We, we lost Alberto. We need to find out where he is to complete our <laughs> rework it crew. Fantastic. Thank you so much, everybody, for being here. And Asus, I don't know if you're ready to, to swap. Yeah, I was just going to say, it's, if there's no other questions, I think it's your turn. It's, it's, it's about time. Before moving on, could you show us how to share and to get the chance to, to be featured for our last time tomorrow with us? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So the website is imclaudy.com slash rework it. And our final rework it show will be tomorrow. Um, I don't know if it's going to be the final one forever, but at least the final one for the next couple months, at least it might be the final one forever. So make sure that you submit um, your work if you want to be featured in tomorrow's final episode. It, all you have to do is click on this button, submit your design and add your email, upload your design name, Behance profile, very important. And just give us consent to use the images. Let us know what apps you use and ask us any specific questions and click on the submit button. Again, you get to this page by going into iamclaudy.com slash rework it. iamclaudy.com slash rework it. All right, Claudia, I think we're ready for you. Fantastic. And I wanted to say, share your love for rework it by putting a blue heart in the chat. So if you enjoy your time with us, we want a blue heart in the chat. Or Sus, you're a fan oh. of the thumbs up, aren't you? Uh, blue heart's too. fine. Blue heart, blue heart's fine. <laughs> I'm actually looking oh, here. I'm going to I'm going to put one there. There blue heart in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Fantastic. Right. Beautiful. So I'm just going to prepare my screen. So we're still on yours and I'm just going to tell you real quick. Uh, I just want to make sure that I uh, can go into my correct screen and here we are. So as you can see, I'm already showing to you the artist that we're going to be uh, featuring today. So today for InDesign and Illustrator, we have the super mega talented Caroline Starrett from New York, USA. Caroline, I've seen you in the chat. So I want to say hello. Thank you so much for joining us. And I'm so happy that you're here uh, while we talk about your reward. And, oh, we have so much love in the chat. You guys are going to make me yeah. cry. I'm just going to get a little bit of my, of my toilet <laughs> paper here. <laughs> I'm just joking, but thank you so much. Oh, I love this love. Lo so much love to everybody. Good. So hopefully we're going to be back all together for more fun. And keep putting those blue hearts. It really means a lot. Definitely. So, thank you so much, everybody. Um, we have uh, Caroline Sarret, who is in the chat. So you can just simply click on her name. And again, if you are watching from YouTube, make sure to check on Behance done at slash live so we can read the chat you can put your blue heart in the chat to share the love but most importantly you can place any question concern or anything that you have regarding illustrator photoshop in design the design industry freelance life whatever you want in the chat and we're going to be here um to get your questions asus feel free to interrupt but, me at any time yeah by the way uh let's say hi to your dad your dad is in the in the chat oh my dad ciao, Guido. ciao papa <laughs> Tutto it's bene. a family. We have Valdo. Buenas, buenas sera. Oh, is this we got some Italian going on? I've been I've been uh, learning Italian, but I'm like learning phrases right now, and uh, you know things like uh, la donna mangia 
lamella or something <laughs> like that, <laughs> which means like the woman eats an apple or something. Yes, absolutely. That's very <laughs> funny. And then we have um, a fairy, which is our nephew, because he calls us like auntie and uncle. And then we have mm -hmm. Aldari, which is my son. We have like a family. Adobe Live is already, as I usually say, I didn't say it today, I say it all the time, Adobe Live is a safe space to learn together rework it is a mm -hmm. is a place in which we're mm -hmm. gonna uh rework and give a different um point of view to your work so you are the center of it and hopefully everybody by now has followed the talented carolyn Saret. and what i'm going to do today before jumping right away into the project which is the lulu diver which we're going to be looking at it today and by the way i'm sorry if i mispronounced it i'm not sure if it's english or french because there is a lot of french going on in the file already seen I wanted to give a shout out to this amazing Rambo project. Caroline, my only consideration is there is no there is no description. I know that that can be sometimes uh, a little bit of time consuming, but I will strongly recommend to give a little bit of insight on this project. Saving say that I love it. I think you've done a fantastic job. Um, it, this um, double rainbow, the shapes of heart, I think is absolutely gorgeous. Um, we are my rainbow and most importantly, we can see that you have created an animal pin from the look of it. I want it. I would love to buy it. How do I find it? Do you have a website? Let us know because there is no description here for me uh, to go and have a look. Look, I'm wearing a jeans jacket, so I will definitely wear it on this jacket. I absolutely love it. Make sure to go and give a follow to uh, Caroline. As you can see, she created pretty, pretty cool design here. And that's just one of that really caught my attention. And uh, also this uh, little poster remind me of Noma Bar. Um, is Noma Bar works more with a um, negative space. So perhaps Noma Bar would have used the pen and the background to create another object, maybe like a lion, a cat or something related to the topic. If you haven't, if you haven't um, ever, ever seen Noma Bar, make sure to go and give him a look. I don't know if he as a, a Behance profile, but if it does, it's definitely worth having a look. Sorry, I know that that's sidetracking, but I also, um, I think is a lot about inspiration. Reworking is all about inspiration. It looks like we do have Noma Bar. Those are some of his projects. Um, so I can show you some of his project here, although it doesn't look like it is original profile. Got multiple honor. Let's see. No, it's not. Okay, I don't want to go ahead and um, uh, give inaccurate, give inaccurate attribution. But those are really similar. Maybe those are inspired to Noma Bar. As you can see, there is a, a two colors, um, and then there is a, a use of the negative space to create um, another shape. Like in this case, inside the hands, we have this little plane coming out of the heart and the same here for the placeholder with the moon um, and so on. So make sure to go ahead and check also Noma Bar. You can just Google it. It's, it's a very, very popular illustrator does a lot of um, editorial illustrations but yeah so Caroline your work reminded this work with a fake news poster definitely reminded me of his work so go ahead and check out there are more other amazing project Congrats, congratulations Caroline for your beautiful work and I'm gonna start by opening illustrator because we're gonna start by uh, that branding so as I mentioned this branding project is exactly the same branding project that you will find on our Behance page and uh, besides that, um, what I wanted to say here is that the first thing that caught my eye is, of course, you know, the fact that there is a lot, a lot of things going on. So um, that's completely cool. You know, when I host or when I'm the guest of any graphic design stream and we're talking about uh, branding, usually that's very normal. So, Caroline, the, uh, thank you so much for sharing this because I always say it gets ugly before it gets pretty. And this is the phase. In when I say ugly, I don't mean good or bad design. I just mean, you know, it, it becomes chaotic because before we start to narrow down the research. And we can see that also uh, Caroline submitted um, a PDF in which there is the presentation. So definitely that's a way in which she went from creating 
all the different projects and all the different take to the projects and then how to create this very clean presentation um, in which she then literally isolates and puts one and gives the attention to each one of these um, of this logo its own space and its own comment so before moving to the presentation and talking about the presentation i'm going to go back into the illustrator file and i'm going to start to talk a little bit more here about the way that this file is structured so as i said it's completely normal and it's that's the reality of the work of a designer it gets messy um, there is a lot of experimentation going on what we design the only uh, thing that i would recommend here is to make sure to use the layers appropriately so i know here that we have a layer seven that makes a lot of things disappear but i do not see a rationale in the way that you have used the layer so what i would have done is perhaps either have a layer per different version so i know that we have you know for example this version that is um uh, tucked inside a shape with, um, behind it this one has like a wave um, going through and I think that's super cool because there is the old concept of underwater photography so we have like a wave in the middle of the diver so we have this feeling that we're going underwater I love it I don't have any uh, uh, particular critique or feedback for the logo itself is more on the way in which you can develop a branding project and Wade also is saying in the chat, yes, just part of the process. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But um, with experience also come way of come comes way to um, find solutions on how to prevent. Because what happens if your art director or your client come into the room and this is going on? You need to find a way in which you can very quickly hide um, all your work in progress. So one way of doing so is, for example, to head to the view menu at the very top in Illustrator and then select uh, trim view. As you can see, trim view is already a big, big helper because it will hide everything that is not displayed on an artboard. So with the trim view, uh, we have only in view the uh, the element which are located inside the artboard again i'm going to zoom in real quick so you can see this detail we have some of the design here showing and i will definitely click and drag it to make sure that is outside uh your artboard so it gets hidden with the trim view and then i'm going to go ahead into view and then untick trim view to go back and show all the other design and i'm sorry here i know i messed your little um your composition so i'm just gonna click and move it but I'm also here to give you some freebies because, and that's why I loved this project. And again, Caroline, thank you so much for showing and sharing with us your uh, workflow. If you had to imclady.com, uh, and in this case, it's not slash rework it, but it's imclady.com, and then you click under resources, you'll be able to access the branding bundle. So yeah, that's the correct handle, uh, the correct uh, link, imclady.com slash branding dash bundle from here and by the way thank you so much uh wade we have a link to caroline uh pins which is an animal pin with a rainbow that we showed before um and is on etsy fantastic thank you so much wade for having uh, uh found that i absolutely i'm definitely gonna go and do some shopping myself uh caroline you've done a fantastic job um, and what I wanted to show you here is that if you head on the free uh, branding bundle, you will have access to uh, free templates and mockups starting from the very foundation of a branding. And this will help you to start communicating with your client and also for you to have a better understanding of your branding project. We do have uh, a branding PDF glossary to communicate appropriately with all the keywords for branding. A very general, very general uh, sale of contract. So this is just basically something to protect your and your client's rights. All he says is that, hey, until you pay me in full, the design is mine. The moment in which you pay me in full, um, this, the design is yours. And what happens if a client walks away in the middle of the design? So that's going to give you a little help from that stage. But then when we get into um, uh, the mood board development is the second stage. But right now, the logo development, which exactly what we're seeing with uh, what we're seeing with um, Caroline, it gets into a, a template which I'm going to show. So the comparative stage is which uh, Caroline has already shown and is the file in InDesign. So very well done. The logo development happens in the Illustrator environment and then the presentation happens usually in InDesign. So amazing workflow there. But let me show you this logo development freebie um, that you can see um, here. So 
here we go. This is the uh, template that I've shared with you. As you can see, it's pretty clean, but it goes back to what we were talking about in terms of making uh, and taking advantage of your layers as much as possible. We have, and I'm going to zoom in here into my design, the first top layer called work in progress. So everything that is going to be here, it will be just rough draft, something that we're just experimenting with. And uh, since I'm going to, um, what I want to do is just literally grab little bits and, and bulbs from Caroline Works and try to play place them in the correct um, in the correct box and then in the correct layer. So, uh, for example, what would you put and how to use this template? What would you put in the work in progress? Caroline, you gave us fantastic example. So here where we have the original shape that is composed by two different shapes and then it became the background of one of your options. This is the perfect, perfect work in progress um, sort of shape that, we're, that, that I'll be looking for. So all I have to do in this case is press command C to copy and I head to the template and we have inspiration shapes. Now here you can place uh, some, for example, mood board. Um, I don't see any image reference or perhaps, Caroline, uh, maybe you did have them because I see that there were some file that were missing. And uh, just before jumping into the work in progress, let me show you. Whenever you send and share a file with your peers, with your colleagues, with your clients, make sure all the time to head to the window menu and select links. And then, as you can see, we have all these little question marks in red here because the links, which are the images, the screenshot that Caroline um, uh, has placed inside the document are missing. In order to avoid that and to transform it into linked object, like you can see, you will have this different icon. All you have to do is to select uh, the item that is missing and then click on the top fly out menu at the top right and select embed images or image. Of course, right now, this is colored on a lighter gray simply because uh, we do not have the image. But um, uh, yes, Caroline is saying they were there. Yes, they were there. But unfortunately, you will have to embed them. And once you will embed them, they will be able to uh, be visualized. <laughs> Busted. Yes. <laughs> Don't worry, Caroline. It happens all the time. I've done it many, many times. So it, I, that's many times. That's why I uh, enjoy sharing these, these tips. So make sure to head to window links. You can select one or you can select multiple by holding the shift key. And then again, top flight menu and you will see the embed images activated. And just for the sake of uh, experimenting, because I want to show you the way that it looks like, I'm going to go ahead and take an image. In this case, is the screenshot from um, Achilles from the uh, Asus, Asus Rework It. And what we've done here, we just place the image. So you can see as soon as you open it into your machine, the screenshot, it'll be there. It appears into the links. But if I now share this link, this, this file with Asus, it won't be there anymore. In order to make sure that Asus or whoever you're working with will receive your images comprising the files that you have added, select on it, click on the flyout menu. And as you can see now that we have an image, we can nice and easy click, click clicking on embed, click on embed. And as you can see, the icon will be this little rectangle and uh, um, triangle at the back. So it's almost like a smart object. You are embedding <laughs> the image inside the file. If you do not have any icon, that means that the image is just placed without being embedded. If you have a red question mark, it means that it's missing. So make sure to go ahead and check your file before you share them. There is any question in the chat, Asus? Anything? In um, no questions. Just. Um... I don't know if you want to tackle this, but there is a question about how much to charge uh, for work to clients. Oh, that's a very recurring question. Absolutely. Um, why not? Let's talk about it. In that's a very, um, I believe that's based on experience. Uh, that will be my first questions. Uh, I think that the majority of us when starting and I'm going to put myself, I want to throw myself in the middle as well. Um, we start by uh, undercharging. So uh, that's perhaps has been my mistake. I started by not charging enough. And trust me, you'll start to feel that right away that mm -hmm. that doesn't feel right. Because when you start working and you feel that the amount of work that you put is not 
uh, satisfied. You have this sort of feeling like, hey, I'm working a lot and I don't think that the money that I'm receiving are correct for the amount of effort that I'm putting in. Well, that's the first signal that you got to bounce up and, ra and, and raise your prices. Then, of course, it's very important to start to do a research um, in the industry. So ask your peers, ask, ask with people that have uh, experience. I have a lot of people that ask questions. You can go on website on printmysoul.com, which is my studio. Um, if you dive in into the services, you can get to a PDF where there is a price list. So maybe go and check people who have uh, already a few um, years of experience so you can start to um, you know, uh, formulate an opinion regarding an hourly, um, hourly uh, wage. And that's the way that I will start by charging by the hour. The very first, when I started, I started by uh, charging per hour, then creating very appealing packages that um, kind of sum up more hours. So people, you know, they will already uh, maybe harm me for an entire week. And then uh, maybe a retainer for how, how it is to work, um, uh, you know, uh, that, that will be more convenient for them to hire me for an entire month. But that will give me more stability, more financial stability, and that will give them a discount. Uh, also, if you aren't uh, sure about how much you're charging, remember, I always suggest to uh, perhaps charge a little extra. You always have the option to uh, come back and give an offer, give a discount or uh find a way to find a compromise with your with your client uh, and also uh, make sure that you when you make this comparison is also uh, related to the the location because of course um you know uh, that also something that would change the amount you cannot compare uh, someone that works and i'm just saying in australia or in italy because of course the economy is completely different so it maybe not make sense for a startup uh, to spend the same amount of money so do a little research in that sense. And then um, something else that I've done when I started to create those packages is also to apply right away a discount. That makes your client feel better. And by all means, the final price is a fair price. So you're not tricking anybody, but you are right away um, making sure that, you know, if, if that's the threshold, if you do not want to go below the price, you're already protecting yourself by offering a discount ahead. So if you have a little bit of room, and maybe you think that you are trying to hit the higher margin. And again, that, per that perhaps can be uh, an idea. Have a higher margin and a lower margin that you think that you can charge. So you have the juggle room. And if you decide to go ahead and quote first with the higher one, you have the option to offer a discount. Well, if you already quote with the lowest possible for you, already show that you have applied a discount. So there is no more uh, room to go any lower. Sean said, always add 10% to the bid because you can say I've been in Adobe Live chat. <laughs> yes, you're part of our family, of the yeah. Banana Club. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but just, let me know if there is any question. I know we just got a few minutes. I'm just going to go ahead yeah. and uh, perhaps tomorrow uh, we can start again. Uh, from this project. But Caroline, also, if you do download um, the, uh, and if you have time, absolutely, in your in your time, in your own time, if you do have the opportunity of using the, um, the template, I would love to see your take on it. I'm just going to be real quick here. So in this case, for the work in progress in the inspirational shapes, I will go ahead in the make sure that I'm in the work in progress layer. And I'm going to go ahead and place all the uh, shapes that are part of our um, inspiration for the logo. Here they are. So I'm just going to go ahead and make sure that they're all copied into the correct layer here. And I'm just going to do this too. Then into the work in progress, you can see that we have a version one, two, and three. And in this case for uh, Caroline, this will be our first version one, which contains um, all this box behind the, behind the text. Oops, it looks like I missed something i'm rushing here so let me go back and make sure that first of all unlock the layer just in case something is locked um, so that will be our option one oops so i'm gonna copy and paste it into my work in progress and again sorry uh, sorry carolina now there are little uh, bits that i'm missing here uh, perhaps also would be a good idea to um group your elements when you are working um, with when you create all these uh, type blocks. I'm just going to place it there again. It's just for you to give an idea on how to use it. And then we have this other option uh, with the Lou Diver 
uh, with a wave, which I think is super clever. Here it is. And that will be in the case of the uh, progress number two. Unfortunately, I do have to um, resize it. And that give you an idea, gives you an idea also of how to make a better usage of your artboard, just like so. So those are all the different part work in progress. And of course, we have uh, inspiration and the brief uh, and also typography. So in this case, for the typography, I will go ahead and get all this beautiful type that she has. As you can see, line around is a little bit all over this board. And we can just simply copy it and then paste it inside that typography, um, in, inside the typography arbors. And the reason why um, I can see here, by the way, fantastic choice of typography, Caroline. I really, really like it. I know that I missed some letters here, but I really love what you have done also with the wave inside Diver. Uh, the reason why I have a typography and then a work in progress artboard is because that will allow you to keep the font live. So in this case, you can go ahead and change if you want to use that font and you always have uh, the, the font available there for you to maybe make an edit or look for a different character to create the wave. And then you can simply copy and work on it and, uh, and trace it and outline it on one of the work in progress versions. Um, so uh, just real quick, if you don't know how to outline your font, I'm just going to go ahead and just write test. Susa, I know that we got perhaps like one minute. Yeah. I'm just going to do this real quick. So the entire idea is to keep the live font, like in this case, we have the word test live here. We always know that it's going to be in our Myriad Pro. All you have to do is to press the Option Command key, drag it into uh, one of your work in progress. And now that you're working with it as a shape, all you have to do is to use the shortcut Shift Command O. That will be Shift Control O if you're working on window. And now that's a shape. But if it's a mistake or you're looking for another letter from the same font, here it is. It will be always available. Uh, oops, it looks like I didn't copy it. Uh, it will always be available for you inside the typography arbor. So this is a, a, perhaps a better way to create a more organized way to use uh, to develop your logo. But unfortunately, it's time to say goodbye. Caroline, I can see in the chat to say that you um, were going to give it a go. So I hope to see it tomorrow. Um, the font is called Gallery Modern. It looks absolutely beautiful. But it's time to say goodbye. Thank you so much, everybody, for this Thank time everybody. together. Make sure to stay tuned because there is more coming up at Adomi Live. Just check below us to see the schedule. And as usual, we're going to be back for you tomorrow. So submit, submit, submit because we look forward to rework it. See you tomorrow, everybody. Bye. Bye.